Let's review. In the first part of this series on fractional factorial designs, we learned about the information contained in an experiment. We saw that much of the information on interactions is empty and has little or no effect. We will use this concept to build 2 to the k minus p fractional factorial designs using a concept called confounding. Let's get to understand what confounding means. Do you recall the developer solution experiment from the vignette on balanced factorial designs? It is time to actually do that experiment. It's Friday and everybody is anxious to begin the weekend. Here is the design again, shown in non-random order, with a new twist. To speed up the execution of this experiment, my boss, who wants to go fishing on the weekend, gets two operators to run the treatment combinations in two different dark rooms. The top half of the experiment goes to operator number one, and the bottom half goes to operator number two. Now, what would have taken eight sequential hours to accomplish can be done in only four hours, and my boss can leave early to go fishing. Can you see what's wrong with this approach? What if the operators have a different agitation technique? The developer process is sensitive to how much and how vigorously the developer tank is agitated. This is a hand process, and if one operator shakes the tank only slightly and is assigned to the higher temperature, the expected effect of the increased temperature will be negated by the low amount of agitation. And if the lower temperature runs are agitated excessively, the effect of the lower temperature will be nullified. If the operators are reversed, then the effect of the temperature will be exaggerated. Temperature is confounded, mixed up with operator. We can't be sure which is influencing the response. So confounding means that two or more things are acting with the same pattern. We can't tell which factor is causing the response to change. This is not a good situation. Can we do better? Can the experiment be completed with two operators in half the chronological time with no detrimental confounding? Can my boss leave early to go fishing? Will he catch a big fish? The answer is yes, uh, except a maybe for the big fish. Let's see what power we can unlock from this experimental structure. Recall how a design is built. We label the column headings, TC, factor A, factor B, and factor C. Now, fill in the minus and plus signs in each factor column. Let's review the pattern that we learned in the last vignette. 2 to the n minus 1 like signs per set where n is the column number. So for column 1 we have 2 to the 0 which is 1. So we only have one like sign per set. Start with the minus and a plus and continue until we have filled in all eight rows for this design. In column two we have two minus one which is one and two to the first is two so we have two like signs per set. Again begin with the minus and then fill in the plus. In column 3, there are 2 to the 3 minus 1, which is 2 squared, or 4 minuses and 4 pluses in each set. Let's see what information this design holds for us. It has a total of seven degrees of freedom. Each single effect uses one degree of freedom, and there are three single effects, so we have four pieces of information left. There are three two-factor interactions, AB, AC, and BC. So we have one degree of freedom left. That is the three-factor interaction a, B, C. 
We have already established that the likelihood of a three-factor interaction is very small, so this piece of information is empty. If we were to do an analysis of the three-factor interaction, its effect would be zero. This is the key to allowing my boss to go fishing. To get the pattern of signs for the three-factor interaction, we multiply the signs of the factors row by row. So for the first row, we get a minus times a minus times a minus is a minus. Second row, plus times two minuses is a plus. A minus times a plus times a minus is a plus. Two pluses times a minus is a minus. Notice when you have an odd number of minus signs, it's a minus. So here we have two minus signs times a plus gives me a plus. One minus sign times two pluses is a minus. One minus sign times two pluses again is a minus. And three pluses multiplied together give me a plus. So now we have the pattern of change for the ABC interaction. Instead of confounding operator with the temperature, we confound the operator variation with the ABC interaction, which has no effect. I hope that you see that we have confounded the unwanted effect, the operators, with something that is not going to happen, the three-factor interaction. This is a major concept in fractional factorial designs. Since the operator is not being studied in this experiment, but only is an expedient in getting it done sooner, we call this particular design a blocked factorial. Blocked factorials and fractional factorials are like first cousins. They have different purposes. In a fractional factorial, we want to study all the factors included. In a blocked factorial, we need to systematically remove the effect of the unwanted nuisance factors. Both approaches use the same technique of confounding unlikely effects, like the three-factor interactions are higher, with the additional factors of interest.